Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. in Andover, Minnesota. I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class here on Facebook. Um, let me just click on a couple things here. It is February 12th, uh, 2020 at 11 a.m. Central Time. And, oh, that's the wrong one. Let's do this. <laughs> there you are. Now we're on Facebook. Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel is the name of my page. So if you are here, you are with me. <laughs> if you are um, here on a different time, different day, you are not live, but you can certainly still comment afterwards. I'd love to read your comments. In fact, when you comment, uh, you get entered into a prize drawing that I do at the end. So yay. And the prizes are really good today. I love them. Um, this is one of my favorite suites that I'm going to share with you. It is from the spring catalog, the 2020 spring catalog. It's called Peaceful Poppies Suite. And I actually paired just the paper from this suite with a stamp set, another stamp set that I love from the spring catalog called Music from the Heart. And um, so I'm going to be sharing a project, a 3D project with you using those two products mainly. Hi, Loretta. Hi, Sonia. Uh, thank you for sharing too. Yes, when you comment, um, you get entered into the prize drawing and when you share and then comment that you shared the video, you also get entered. So comment away. I love to read the comments. Um, I catch up on them, not maybe right away, but soon afterwards. And I love to hear what you have to say. In fact, some of you sometimes give me tips that I um, did, never even heard about. <laughs> One was last week about placing a paper towel um, with the vellum when you crank it through the, the big shot or through the die cutting machine, I should say, um, because you could use it with any die cutting machine and it actually helps to reduce the amount of breakage of the fibers of the vellum. So I have to try that. That was a, an awesome tip. So I learned from you just as you learned from me and we just have a fun time. So thank you for joining me again. Um, let me see what else I want to tell you before we get started. I think that's it. So again, it's February 12th. 2020 at 11 a.m. Central Time. I'm so glad that you're with me, you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna just dive right into the project. This is a video where you're not gonna see it beforehand, but I'm gonna show you um, the project at the end, and then I'm gonna show you a couple other samples of it. It is, as you saw from the title of the video, a vertical sticky note or post-it note um, pad and pen holder. And what a great gift idea, those of you that um, like to give small gifts to your coworkers or to your family and friends. This is really quick and easy to make. Um, I'll have the measurements. Thank you for sharing, you guys. <laughs> I'll have the measurements and uh, photos of the close-up uh, close-up photos of the projects, plus um, this video, and it will be shared on my blog post in just a couple days. I like to take the video and add it into the blog post, which is why you don't see the blog post right away. But um, it's always better when you can see it all together at once, I think. All right, let's dive in. Let's go to the computer first so you can see the, um, the supplies that we're gonna use. There we go. And let's take this off there. Okay, so now you can read it all. And you can take a screenshot if you'd like to so that you can make the project right away rather than waiting until Saturday is when I'm gonna post this. Um, so vertical sticky note pad and pen holder. I'm calling it a sticky note pad. Um, I'm using Post-it Notes by 3M, but there's all different brands out there. Um, my favorite is Post-it, or 3M's Post-its. But um, yeah, any 3x3 three three little pad will work. In fact, you could even cut paper for it. But here's the supply list over here that you'll need in order to recreate the project in its entirety. Um, and then the measurements are over here for one of the three, the one that I'm gonna, going to be demonstrating for you. And you can see, oh, you know what? <laughs> okay, mistake number one from Rachel. Ignore the measurements. Um, these are wrong. <laughs> well, there you go. Let's just get away from the computer now and go right to the desk. There. Okay, don't take a screenshot. The supplies are right, but I forgot to put the measurements in last night. That's what happens. I guess I'm just, I don't know, I had something else on my mind. <laughs> Ignore those measurements because those are from last week. All right, this is the paper that we're going to be featuring in today's project. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, laugh it off, that's all we can do. It's beautiful paper. Uh, this paper, I just I shared a card using this sheet right here today um, on my blog. And 
you can just use like any of these sheets just make gorgeous cards just as is you just need a sentiment so they're double-sided let me flip them over so you can see and I do not have full 12 by 12 sheets left because I love this paper so gosh darn much um, you can see these are the more neutral sides but this one here is actually double-sided and it's like got some pizzazz on each side but this is the other five sheets are more more neutral more monochromatic you could you could say so all right so let's put those behind us this is the stamp set that I'll be using it's called music from the heart this was designed by a friend of mine Donald Shevsky she's a fellow Minnesotan demonstrator and um, she helped to design the images because she was one of the million dollar sales achievers and I love 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 this set I'm so glad that her brain worked this way um, it's got some witty little uh, sentiments in it and of course music um, I'm a big fan of all kinds of music so anyways we're gonna be using the the main one we're gonna be be using is just a note because we're gonna make we're gonna make a notepad holder right okay and I think I already have those stamps set aside so let's bring in the trimmer and <laughs> And the paper we're gonna be using old olive paper. Thanks Chris for your empathy on there. Yeah, you know It's a live class. It's bound to happen. I can't go back and retape So let's open up the arm of our trimmer. This is our wonderful Stampin' Up trimmer In fact, I'm gonna do something with my face here because I don't think it's far enough over there <laughs> Now I'm far enough over and we're gonna zoom in a tad so you can see some of the measurements on this trimmer so um, our trimmer has this extendable arm. If you have never seen one of my classes before, this is an awesome tool to get. Um, it's got an extendable arm so you can measure cardstock that's, gosh, up to 17 beyond, beyond 17 inches. Um, so let's start by taking our eight and a half by 11 cardstock. This is our um, old olive color. And we're gonna cut it in half this way. So half of that is five and a half. So you're just gonna bring the edge of your paper right up to the five and a half inch mark here. We're gonna use the dark blade, that's the one that cuts, and you just slide it along. Now we have two different halves. Now this project can be made with one sheet of eight and a half by 11, in fact, less than one half. So if you're a demonstrator and you're doing this with classes, this is really easy to prepare um, for your class. Okay, so now that we have that, I've got my little cheat sheet over here. The first thing that we wanna do is rotate it again, um, and we're going to place it horizontally into our trimmer again. And then we're gonna put a couple score marks in here. And hang on a minute, cause I don't have my measurements to refer to anymore on my computer. <sighs> so I just have to measure something off to the side really quickly. Ignore, okay, yep, there we go. Two and a quarter inches is the first score line. And we're scoring parallel to the short end here. The scoring blade is the one that is lighter in color on this trimmer. So you just press down and then you move it to the two and three quarter inch mark. You guys are just gonna have to memorize this because I am so sorry about those measurements. That's crazy. I'm usually so organized. Well, kinda. Okay, so I've got the two and a quarter and two and three quarter inch mark. In between those is a half inch. Okay, so we're gonna have, that's gonna be the bottom of our of our little holder here but now we have to rotate it so it's parallel to the long edge of our cardstock and I'm gonna use the measurements on this side of the channel we're gonna to go to the 3 8 inch mark and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so that you can see where that mark is so here's the half inch mark right here and it's just two little notches over there's the 3 8 inch marks so we're gonna place it there and we're gonna score all the way through and then we're going to shift it and we're going to score at seven eighths of an inch and before we move our paper we're going to set our scoring blade out of the way and we're going to come up and through with our trimming blade let me zoom out now we're going to come up and we're going to go right to this first score line remember the first two score lines that we made here this is two and a quarter this is two and three quarters we're going to go right up to the two and three quarter inch mark it's just gonna make it faster for making a quick, clean cut. So, hi Sandy, glad you could join. Now we're gonna turn it this way, and we're gonna do the same score line. So, 3 eighths of an inch, and 7 eighths of an inch. And then after we've done this score line, 
we're gonna actually lift the arm of our trimmer up. We're gonna move the cutting blade up here because now you can see I rotated it all the way around. Our score lines are down here at the bottom. So we wanna cut from the top down to that first score line. And now we've got these easy little cuts already in the base piece. Now we need to make one other base piece and that is going to be cut at three and three quarters of an inch by eight and a half, but actually, I lied. <laughs> we are gonna make it eight and a quarter. So you're gonna trim off just a quarter of an inch this way, parallel to the short side. So we have an eight and a quarter by three and three quarter inch piece. This one is gonna receive three score lines. We're gonna give it a score line at a half inch, and I'm using this side of the, of the trimmer for that half inch mark. I used it over here. And now I'm gonna rotate it and do the other two score lines because this will go beyond more. So here's the half inch. You can see how it'd be easier to hold on the, yeah. So anyways, that's why I did it on that side. But now we wanna to go to the one and a half and the two and a half. It's a good thing I have those memorized. Okay, so you can see where the score lines are if I angle it just slightly. This is our behind the um, container piece, and this is our in the front container piece. We have to do one more thing before we put our trimmer away. In fact, we have to do two more things. I better pull this paper out here. We have to grab our designer paper and cut that too. Okay, so now we have to trim these pieces off. So we're gonna trim, you see where that first score line is? We're gonna trim through there, but we're gonna angle it a little bit. We want a miter miter that corner so we're going to come in just slightly because we're going to make a tab all right we're going to do the same thing to the other side of that tab so here's that other score line and we're going to actually cut that straight first and then we're going to come in and we're going to miter or angle cut that corner okay so now we have a tab and we have this part still attached because we never want to we don't want to trim that off we just want to trim off the longest edges We'll turn it around, we'll do the same thing. So we'll angle cut in, or miter or whatever, to give us a tab. And then we'll cut straight into the second one, lower down or closest to this edge, and then we'll miter it. And now we have a tab on that side, okay? So that's what it should look like so far. So, hey Joanne, I'm glad you caught me live too. <laughs> and now we can go ahead, and you don't have to do this, but you can make your tabs shorter if you'd like to. You can also keep them longer. Um, just because I want to be consistent on uh, all of my images that I'm going to share on my blog on Saturday, I'm cutting it a little bit shorter. But again, that's not a necessary piece to do. Um, this piece here now, we have two of them. Two of them came off the sides of this, right? So we want to take just one of them. We're going to trim it. Now notice this is an angled side because we mitered that. So we want the one that's flatter. And we're going to bring that in to four and a quarter inches and slice and then we want to give this a couple score marks we're going to score it at a half inch and we're going to score it at one inch okay if i can get there there we go so now we have all of our base pieces ready to go we need to cut our designer paper our designer paper is six inches tall by three and a half yeah three and a half inches wide and you can really use any of the pieces from this paper, uh, Peaceful Poppies paper it is gorgeous. It's gorgeous stuff. Um, I, I think because the uh, post-it, yeah, the post-it notes that I get are three by three. So I didn't want this piece to be any narrower. If you make it three inches, then you're not gonna have room for designer paper behind the pen. So that's the reason why it's three and a half. If we were able to make it three by six, just think how many you can get from one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock or paper, but I didn't, so sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna cut now two inches from the bottom or top, um, and then the other piece is gonna be four inches. I'm gonna go ahead and cut from the bottom because it really doesn't matter, but on another one that I'm gonna show you at the end, it was cut from a different sheet of designer paper from that pack, and this is where I cut the two inches from. So I'll just go ahead and do that now, and then I'll be able to show that to you later and lay those pieces on there. So instead of having this be, um, the, the two inch piece come from the bottom, I, I didn't want the flowers to disappear. And you'll know what I mean once I get going on this. 
Okay, so I've got those pieces done. Um, the last of the cardstock pieces do not have to be um, do not have to be cut with the paper trimmer. Um, they're going to be punched. So we have a basic black circle that is cut or punched from the one and a half circle punch. And then we're also going to stamp and punch out with our timeless label punch some whisper white cardstock. And I'm using the thick whisper white cardstock because it's going to take some blends markers. Um, in fact, um, yeah, hang on. <laughs> if we're going to use some blends markers, I need some scrap paper. Good thing I have things handy. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and take our stamps and we'll do this now. Um, we're gonna stamp, where is it? Just a note and my fun little note image with a heart in it. We're not gonna do much coloring, but it's enough where um, it just gives it a little bit more, I don't know, zest. <laughs> is that a word? So let's go ahead and stamp this first because that's gonna determine where we punch. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my punch. I know, normally I stamp the whole thing and then I punch, but we have two images to line up and I want, you'll, you'll see that this image is actually quite a bit taller than the punch allows. So I kinda of wanna use that as a guide. I love the way the little um, hangy thing off the note I haven't read music in a long time. Don't I don't know what it's called again. I'm sorry, but the little hangy thing off the note, the eighth inch note. <laughs> I know that's an eighth inch or eighth eighth inch. It's an eighth note. Um, that kind of goes in that same pattern as the timeless label punch little arch there. So we're gonna punch it there, and then we're gonna be able to know where to stamp the sentiment. My son plays piano, and I. Uh, I just, I don't know. You'd think that I'd be able to keep up with this stuff because I used to play piano a lot. It's an eighth inch or eighth note. It's an eighth note. <laughs> okay, just stop talking, Rachel. Um, now we're gonna layer these pieces over each other like that, but we wanna color first. So we're gonna use the blends markers and the blends markers that I chose for this one is the Poppy, uh, the, they're the Poppy Parade um, light and dark blends. On another one, I actually used three different colors. I used the Mango Melody, Mango Medley, Medley, Melody. Um, now I have to look it up. See, I'm just stumbling now. I'm just stumbling. <laughs> it's the light and dark mango one. And then I also brought in the light uh, pumpkin, um, pumpkin pie color, because I wanted it more orangey, like the pen that coordinates with that particular one. When I color with blends, I use the light first typically. So we're going to go ahead and color that heart, the whole thing, with the light blends. And then we're going to come back in with the dark to give a little accent area, or not an accent, a shadow area. And I'm just going to put that on the bottom. And then we're going to come back in and we're going to blend the dark into the light. And you'll see why I need grid paper underneath in just a second here. So that's all we needed the blends for. Super easy, very easy. Okay, I'm bringing some tools over here that I need. We have our ribbon cut and ready. We have our post-it notepad ready. We have our pen ready, which is a Stampin' Up! pen um, from our last on-stage fun event that Stampin' Up! puts on. And um, yeah, so I grabbed up a bunch of extra ones. And there is our fun little sentiment piece. And then on the back side, you can see the color comes through. So we wanted to protect our table. It did not get on our grid paper, but just in case it would have, it's good to have um, something underneath when you're coloring with those alcohol-based markers. We'll zoom in a bit. We're gonna go ahead now and add this to our one and a half inch basic black circle so it's looking centered. And then we're gonna put dimensionals on the top and the bottom. Hey Deb, how are ya? Caught your name. I don't always look up at the comments, you guys. I'm very bad at that while I'm live, but it was fun to see your name, Deb. <laughs> All right, um, we need our sticky, or our tear and tape adhesive. We're done with the dimensionals. We need our snail and, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh. You people that know me, I brought this and put it right on my table 
But did I for I forgot to use it. I forgot to use it. This is a good uh, tool to have underneath your stamping when you are using photopolymer or totally see-through stamps. Regular stamps like the cling stamps, the clear mount, the wood mount, they all have a cushion between the rubber and the block, but photopolymer or totally clear stamps do not. And so creating a cushion underneath your surface when you stamp will help give you a richer image. Oh well. It's better with big stamps. With big stamps, I always remember. I promise you guys, I do. What are we doing? All right, <laughs> here we go. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out. We need to now start sticking everything down and you're gonna love this. You, I, I, I love it. If you don't love it, that's fine, but I love it. We're gonna add some um, designer paper to the top of this piece. And this is how it's going to come together like this. Okay, so we have our score lines. So this is the top front right here. So we want that here with about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. And then we want this piece on the other front section right down here. So this is the other front section and you might wanna give your creases a little crease there, a little fold. That way you can see where you're going. And that's going to be placed here like that. That's not looking good. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. I'm a picky person. All right. There. It helped to put the little arm things back. Now you can go ahead and fold on all of your score lines because we need to do some taping. We're going to tape this piece that looks like a, I, I don't know, a little Z. It's going to hold the pen in place inside the container. Okay. And so I like to bend it this way so that my flat is um, to the left of me as I'm going to insert it. And the, um, I'm sorry, the long end is to the left of me and the short end is to the right popped up. Okay, and then I have this upside down. That's the way I position it because I think it's easiest for me because I need to get in there after I've attached this section to this and I need to be able to remove the tape off of this last portion and get in there with my finger and lift it up. So we're gonna be taping this first and it's gonna connect right here. Now you'll notice on this that when I fold this up, it, it's deep in there. It's cause this paper extends into the pocket area of our little holder further. It's, it doesn't just stop here, it goes in further. So that's kind of a guide too, to help me to know where to place this piece. It's kind of like a little stopper and it allows that paper to be nice and straight. So now we put on the tear and tape adhesive. Tear and tape adhesive is great. Um, another great adhesive that you could use for this project would be the multi-purpose glue, also known as green glue. Um, it's not actually green, but a lot of people call it the green glue because it's in a container that has a green cap. Um, so that's what this piece is gonna look like. T tape on this side, tape on this side and that's going to be our support inside the container. Now for the taping of this piece we want to put tape here because this is going to wrap around to the back and we want to put tape here. So these are on the outside scored sections. So here I'll just fold it this way so you can see. That's the outside scored section on, on both ends here or both sides and it's going to wrap around and it's going to attach to the back, which is why we want the tape there. And then um, on this piece here, we have a couple pieces of tape to put on. First of all, let's go ahead and bend it into kind of a W or an M. So we, we want this look, and it can go either way, it doesn't matter, but we've got our W or M look, depending on how you look at it. And when you flatten it down, we need tape here, and we need tape here. So, Let's add that to this spot. I love this tape because you can just place it on there and tear it. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna do this on purpose. I made it extra long. Do you see that? It goes beyond the paper. That's okay. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. You don't have to peel it off, which will be kind of impossible because it's really strong tape. Um, all you have to do instead is just fold it over onto itself. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm burnishing or putting pressure and, and a little bit of friction onto the tape to make sure 
that it's really attached. That's good to do with any kind of adhesive, even the snail adhesive. All right, um, let's do one more bit of stamping here. Um, no, we'll do that after. <laughs> okay, sorry, I got excited. I always do that, I get excited and I go too far ahead. Okay, Rachel, slow down. So on this piece, actually we're gonna do that in just a second. Let's do this first. Let's attach um, the front section and then we'll attach the back section. So you want to put this right below your designer paper. So we're gonna go ahead. Oh, where's my tool? I have my, oh, here it is. There's my tool, my take your pick tool. For those of you that paint your fingernails, because I used to, this is, so awesome for peeling off the backings of the or the release paper from this tape. I can do it with my fingernails because they're pretty thin now, but um, if you have thicker or painted fingernails, this is awesome. So we're just going to stick that in like that. Notice again, this is to the left of me, this is to the right and upward, and this is upside down. Okay, it's sitting upside down. So now we're not going to remove the backing on this tape, but instead we're going to go to these next. Okay, so Again, you can use your thin fingernails, or you can use your little take your pick tool, which is gonna come in handy on the smaller piece, okay? This is where I need this tool, is on the smaller piece. Bring those tabs in. Those are just to kind of, you know, create, so there's no little gap in there. Flatten this puppy down here. Just wanna flatten it to get it out of the way. And then you're gonna bring it around and you're gonna attach it to the back on both sides. It might help to have your post-it note, in fact, it will help, to have your post-it note kind of stuck in there right now because it gives you some kind of pressure um, or some, some substance, I should say, to hold on to when you're attaching this piece to the back and you want it to be squared up. You don't want it to be angled or anything. Now, it's not gonna be completely um, the same width. You wanna have a little gappage in there. I did that on purpose. But then you come in with your bone folder or your finger and you press. I prefer the bone folder, puts a lot more pressure in there and I can reach. And you wanna do that to that side and you can see how tight I have that right up to the edge. Get that piece in the back there. And then do the same thing with this side. So let's just give it a little, little shape and we're gonna wrap that and press. Then we can take our pad out of there, bring our bone folder in, and give it a little burnishing, a little pressure in there. Now, I'm not sure, yes, you can see it. Okay, so there's our little guy here, and it's still, it's still bouncy. It hasn't been attached yet. I'm going to reach in there with my finger and my take your pick tool, and I'm gonna hold it flat down with my finger, and I'm going to use the take your pick tool to remove that tape backing, okay? So, and I don't know if I can actually, sh I wish I had another camera person, I could show you what I'm doing. But I'm getting rid of that tape backing. There we go. See? <laughs> you didn't see what I was doing as I was doing it, but I hope I explained it to you well enough. Now, when you release this, you want to have it pop up but move that way as far as it can go. So I'm, I've got it in there. It's not attached yet. I'm going to shove it over, and I'm going to press it into place. It might help to put your pen in there maybe, or your finger, if you have a small enough finger. And then you just press it into place. And then if you want to, if you can get in there, probably not with that, but you could take a pen and just give it a little pressure to press it down. So there is the front. Ooh, it's coming together. Okay, this piece is next. And I like to peel off the top back portion first. We're gonna peel that away, and remember this is the area where we have that extra tape. So you're just gonna flip it over onto itself, and see, it's, it's so thin, it's awesome. Okay, this gets connected to this, and this little bouncy part in the front, that's your M or W or whatever, that's, that's to the front of you too. So this gets lined up with that, and this gets lined up with that, and you just wanna make sure everything's lined up and flatten it down and give it a little rub again. Okay, at this point, it's probably easiest to do the decorating of the front bottom portion. So we're not gonna attach this quite yet, but we're gonna tie a ribbon around here. And I'm just going to give it a, a little knot 
Okay, and again, sticking your pad inside there might help because you can have a little bit of um, substance in there to help hold this down as you're tying it. And we're just gonna tie our knot and trim it. Oops. I'm, got, I'm going monovision today, you guys. <laughs> Can you tell I haven't pulled out my reading glasses? <laughs> so sometimes there's like this in-between of close and far um, where I'm not, I, I like have to adjust my eyes. Okay, now we're gonna shove it over. So you just kind of shimmy it. We want it a little bit further over, like a half an inch away from the edge over here. And then we'll take the release paper off the dimensionals. Now this is the reason why I did the top and the bottom back side of the sentiment piece because we've got a ribbon going through here and if you attach your dimensionals through the middle it's just going to be setting it's just going to sit on top of the ribbon and then it'll slide with the ribbon it won't be secure we want it to be secure so now we can come in here and we can make sure it's centered looking i'm going to shove it down just a tad we don't don't want to bring the ribbon down too far by the way if you have it too far down then this piece that's going to attach to behind it is going to get in the way Okay, so that's gonna go here, centered. Just a note, and now we can stamp, because this is funny. Well, it's not really funny, but you'll see the, the one that's funny, it's not even funny. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm saying it's funny. It's cute, it's whimsical. Happy birthday, and we wanna make sure that that's below, so it's gonna peek out when they open it. So happy birthday. And you could stamp that on every single post-it note if you want to. No, don't, because then they won't be able to use their post-it notes. And then this one will just kind of go here. And that's going to stick inside there so that when they pull it out, just a note, happy birthday. See? Cute, right? Okay, so you can give this as a birthday gift. Now we can take this off the back. Yes, great teacher gifts, I agree. And then just keep it all squatted down like that okay hold it flat and press it's that easy and then you can even burnish it so we'll take and kind of give it a little pressure in there you might have to go inside to put the pressure on there okay so then you lift this up you stick your post-it notepad inside you stick your pen inside you have this cute little Stampin' Up pen with a post-it notepad. It matches the poppy paper. And what a great gift to give somebody. Here is another one that I made last night. This one's done with basic black cardstock and this sheet that I told you I used up. I used it up on some cards today too that I shared on my blog. And that's where I use the mango color blends and the light pumpkin. Okay, same idea. And then here is the one done with Blackberry Bliss cardstock, because um, that's one of the beautiful colors that's in this pack too. And you can see here, this is where I took this piece, and instead of cutting the two inches from the top, or I'm sorry, from the bottom, that would have been the green, right? That would have gone down here. Your flowers would have been hidden behind your post-it notepad. So instead, that's what I did, if that makes sense. Because there's that, that sheet is just a little different than your other sheets. It's it's more it's not random like the other ones are. So there's all of the post-it notepads. They are so fun, so cute. Right? Yay! <laughs> they are gonna make great gifts for anybody. I mean you could you could crank these out for um, a craft fair too if you're a um, a crafter. But yeah, super cute gifts, teacher gifts, friend gifts, um, things to give away for whatever occasion or just make one for your honey uh, for Valentine's Day really quick because you've got a couple days left. Well, after this is posted, you don't. When it goes up on my blog on Saturday, it'll be too late. But <laughs> for those of you that are watching live, quick, great idea. Okay, so Peaceful Poppies. The reason why I um, am featuring the suite is because in the prizes today, we have a few packs of these to give away. These are the Peaceful Poppies Elements. And I also have a few packs of the Peaceful Poppies sequins. And each winner will get a pen too. So I have a set of three more pens and I thought I would give a pen away. So the prize winner today um, from this video will get 
um, to pick from their color of pen. So you can either have the poppy parade color, the mango color, or the blackberry bliss color. And then um, we also have prizes for next time I broadcast live. Uh, so there'll be two more winners drawn after this has been live for a week. And so YouTube people, if you're watching on YouTube, you can get a chance in on a prize too because I draw a YouTube winner and I draw another Facebook winner um, during my next broadcast. So that's that. And then the prizes from last week, I still have two winners. I have our after live winners. I have um, this prize here to give away to our Facebook person and our YouTube person. So thank you to those of you that have left comments. Again, it's fun, it's social. You teach me, I teach you. It's just, I don't know, live classes are so much fun. Okay, so let's move to the computer. Let me get this set up here so that we can draw some winners. Um, I'm going on a retreat again. <laughs> Yay for me. I'm actually going on three retreats like in a month's time. Um, this one I'm I'm gifting to uh, one of my one of my demonstrators in my group because she's achieved us and held a certain title that's hard to get to and I'm so very proud of her um, she's doing great so yay for Cheryl we're gonna have fun this weekend okay let me move to where am I right take this off take this on put that on okay <laughs> I know what I'm doing there we go all right, so here's um, my Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel Facebook page that you are all on right now. Thank you again for joining. We're gonna find the video from last week, so I'm just gonna click on videos. If you are on a laptop, that's how you access the videos. I don't know how you do it on portable devices because I, I rarely go online uh, on my page on a phone or whatever. But we're gonna scroll, whoops, where is it? Videos, there we go. So this is the live one going on right now, but I'm going to click on the Bend Open Pocket Card, which you have to see. That is a very, very pretty card and a very fun idea. I'm going to click on the link for that, copy it. We're going to bring it into our comment picker, paste it in here, and we're going to see how many comments we have collected over a week's time. Oh, wait a minute. Let's try that again because I know I have more commenters than that. Oh, you know what it was? Oh! <laughs> Because <laughs> normally I have like at least 200 commenters. This is what happened. And we're going to have to go with this. Sorry, you guys. But um, we had, we had, um, I put this video first on my Stamp Your Art Out group. Um, and so then I transferred it over here. And it's on my page now. And only 43 of you commented on my page. I think I'm gonna to have to do it that way because I don't. The other way, it's gonna to be too crazy to put in the one through so many hundred. Okay, bear with me. I might have to just draw an extra prize. Okay, we're gonna take those 43 commenters. Oh boy, you have a good chance if you commented on it on my page. Here we go. The first winner for the set of rhinestones and the um, what is this? Note cards and envelopes. <laughs> it's Jeannie Blake. Congratulations to Jeannie. Yay. All right, and then I think what I'm gonna do, hang on, I'm gonna grab another another Facebook tab here. We're gonna go in. Hey, thanks, Tammy, for sharing your card. <laughs> you guys get to see my personal page really quick. Um, okay, we're gonna go to video. Oh, no, this is not gonna be here. It's not gonna be here. Hang on. I know what I'm doing, sorta. <laughs> this will introduce you guys to my group. So I have a Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel Group, where is it? Um, stamp Your Art Out Group. It's called Stamp Your Art Out Group. There has to be spaces in there. We're gonna click on that. I don't know how this is gonna work. We're gonna try it though, because I might have promised. I'm 51, so I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> but I may have promised these viewers that, hang on, we have to stop the video and see how many comments we have. We have... 300 and no, we have more than that because I saw it just, oh gosh, gosh, oh golly, gee whiz. You know what I have to do? I have to scroll. <laughs> this is why I'm not going to do the, the live price drawing videos on my in my group anymore. There it is. We have 375 comments. You can see that right here. So we're going to go to another comment picker tab here and we're going to do the number, random number generator thing. Um, random generators, is this it? Yes. Uh, number. 
Okay, what did I say? How many? 375. <sighs> One to 375. And generate random number. No, that didn't work. Hang on, because we don't have three. Oh, because I put the number in wrong. <laughs> that would have been really hard to count to 3,000. Thank you for not having 3,000 comments. 375. Here we go. The winner is number 60. That I can count to. The 60th person, person that commented in that video will also get a prize. I don't know what it'll be yet. Sorry. Okay, so, but I'll pick something good. And now we're going to go to the YouTube video. We're trying four prizes today, you guys. Holy cow. Let's go to my personal page, my channel. And we're going to grab the link. <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy. 3,000. Can you imagine counting up to 3,000 to pick a winner? Okay, YouTube commenters. We had 69 of you. And the winner from the YouTube uh, commenters is... Buffy H. Congratulations to Buffy on winning a pack of dimensionals and, or not dimensionals, rhinestones and cards. And now we'll pick our winner from today. You've all had plenty of time to comment on today's video. So here we go. Who's the winner of the Poppy, Peaceful Poppies bundle of stuff? Let's click on the live link. <laughs> Prize winning is so much fun, isn't it? Drum roll. How many commenters do we have live with us right now that have commented? 153, yay! That's like one of the highest numbers we've had live. Let's start and pick our winner of who was with us live today for the Poppy, uh, Peaceful Poppies, Mary Jo Divine. Congratulations to you. Yay, you get to pick your color pen. You either can pick the red, orange, or purple, and then you get the sequins, and you get this, and I'm going to go on a retreat this weekend. I'm going to have so much fun. I can't stand it. <laughs> I love retreats. So this is going to be at my mom and dad's place, which is a cabin um, up in northern Minnesota. And this is the third year, I think, Cheryl, that I've taken you up there. Um, we have people that want to get there. So we have some people that are working on earning it. We might have more to congratulate next to when I talk about this retreat. But anyways, uh, the Silver Elite Retreat is for Cheryl. I'm gonna spoil her. We're gonna have some make and takes. We're gonna get some gifts to her and make her feel loved. All right, thank you so much, you guys. Uh, I hope that you had a great time. If you are interested in purchasing any of these products that I shared today, you can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com and click on the shop button. It's everywhere. If you click on the blog section, you can find the shop button there too. Um, hopefully it's easy to find and you can go ahead and look for these products. And the project will be shared again this Saturday. What date is that? Did I write it down? Saturday, Saturday would be the 13th, right? Oh, no, the 14th, the 15th, the 15th, because today is the 12th. So the 15th is Saturday and um, I'll share this on my blog and then you can see all of this stuff and, and, the, and get the correct measurements by then. <laughs> next Facebook Live will be next Wednesday and that is the 19th, 11 a.m. Central Time at here. <laughs> Stamp your art out with Rachel my actual page that you are on right now. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to sign off. Take care, everyone. And I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.